morning. Well, let's get a view now uh, from a German member of the European Parliament, Scar Keller. Uh, she's with me now. She co-chairs the Greens and European Free Alliance Group uh, in uh, the European Parliament. Uh, I mean, it seems a bit strange here. Mrs May has been leading these negotiations. She's come here saying what she needs, which is some movement on uh, the border question, the backstop question. And uh, now European leaders are saying, well, it's up to your parliament. What's going on? Well, I think the problem is, has always actually been in these negotiations, that it's never really clear what the UK side wants. Um, and on the other side, the EU27 have been very clear um, in what they want and what they need to safeguard. And part of that is now the backstop. So it's unreasonable to expect the EU27 to just cancel the backstop. That's just not going to happen. So the, everyone wants to help me uh, in getting things done smoothly, but it's a bit unclear like how this could be done because May hasn't been clear about that. But isn't it a bit extraordinary that the European Union is saying in perpetuity it should be able to dictate to the British what it does with its border? Not at all because we have a shared uh, border actually. Um, yeah, but, you, but on the Irish side the Irish can do what they like but you're telling us we have to uh, be part of that as well. No. Ireland is part of the European sure. Union, therefore we have a joint border and the question of what happens at that border is very relevant to both, to all of us uh, and indeed in Northern Ireland it's even more relevant what happens at the border than in other uh, parts of the world. So indeed we need to have that common agreement and the deal that was produced is the best possible that the EU27 could offer. We actually make a lot of concessions there as well looking from a European Parliament uh, position. So uh, if there is a, a wish for a change, then the UK side needs to be very clear. But from the EU27 side, it's always been very clear that there cannot be a backtracking on the backstop because that concerns the fundamental principles of the EU. No, but what I'm saying is this is not like even the treaty, the, even the Lisbon Treaty or the uh, NATO uh, Treaty, because what you're saying is uh, you just can't leave from our rules. And that isn't how it works. I mean, you know, we remember uh, the border between East and West Germany. And what West Germany did on its side was up to it. And what East Germany did on its side was up to it. It wasn't West Germany dictating to East Germany what it had to do. No, I'm sorry, it was the UK that decided to leave, and that's very sad. Sure, it's absolutely, a very I accept that. But all I'm saying is, and why, the therefore, needs to can you have a legal proposal that the European Union forever is going to have a veto on what Britain does on its side of the border? No, it's not a forever thing. This is a. Which is? No, it's not at all. The question is, like, how are we going to uh, form our relationship until there is a clear agreement on how our future relationship is going to look like? And of course, that would mean that in order to avoid a hard border between Ireland and Northern Ireland, that there would be, I mean, it could also be that uh, common rules would only apply to Northern Ireland, but that is something uh, that the British government absolutely did not want to have. So the <laughs> EU side said, OK, now what are we going to do? Proposal is the backstop. If you have another proposal, please show no, it to well, us. Mrs. May, Mrs May came here, as far as we understood, and she said, look, we both say we don't want this to be a permanent arrangement. Mm -hmm. uh, we both say uh, that we are going to negotiate a future trade agreement. So let's time limit it. Let's agree that we will reach that agreement within a year. That's been rejected by the European yes, Union. Yes, because unfortunately we know how agreements work. I mean, we see it now in Brexit, right? We're super late. Brexit's going to happen in March, and we still don't have any sort of proper agreement. So it's, I think, very unreasonable. It's just not linked to reality to say after a year it's going to be done. I would be happy if it's done after a year, and then it's obvious that no backstop is going to fall into place. That's only the well, fallback, fallback that, option. Well, the leaders it? have said it exactly that it's going to be a temporary thing, but temporary runs yeah. out exactly when there's an agreement on the future but, but if agreement you, and not before. But as a parliamentarian, you surely understand when Mrs May said, it's not what she's saying now, but what she said a few months ago, that this was something no Prime Minister could accept because it was the European Union having a veto over our policy indefinitely. Not at all. It's everyone... Do you not wants... understand that? Well, I think I understand the situation perfectly well. But, but why, isn't, am... why isn't it, and, uh, and uh, what is going to be a third party from our point of view, why isn't it the European Union saying they're going to carry on dictating? 
We're not dictating anything. The UK was part of the club for a very long time. They have been shaping our policies, our common future. Now the question is, since the UK wants to end that relationship, how are we going to proceed without yeah. creating a hard border? This is all what's about. And we want to find an agreement for the future relationship. And until that is found, there's going to be a lot of time. There's going to be first uh, the transition period. And only then, if we don't manage to find an agreement on the future relationship, only then would the backstop fall into place. But this is indeed yeah, something see, that we need in order to safeguard the EU 27's interest. But the way and we're not going to get around it. I'm very sorry. Well, yeah, but you're not going to get the backstop either. And I can tell you why, because there are people at Westminster who are saying, we'll just leave anyway. We won't agree anything. Uh, we'll walk out. We've already agreed to we'll walk out uh, on the uh, 30th of March. And so there won't be any agreements on the border. Yeah, that indeed might unfortunately happen. That is very sad, but that's true. So there won't be any guarantee there, there won't be any deal that will damage, sure it will damage the UK, but it will damage Absolutely. Uh, everyone else as well. No one wants and to have And yet you're saying that the European Union can do nothing about it? Well, I think the European Union has actually done a lot. We've been negotiating forever, we've made a lot of very big concessions that unfortunately are never part of the debate. Um, but, and now the leaders were also ready to make uh, further offers, but it's very clear that we cannot step back from the EU 27's interests and principles. So there is a very clear red line. Everyone always knew that this was going to be the case. Now indeed the question is how is the UK going to position itself, meaning the government, meaning the parliament. Um, but we've put on the table what we could. We made a lot of concessions. That should not okay, be forgotten. Okay, you say they're not in the debate. Just tell us now that the main concessions you think the EU side have made? For example, in order to make sure that there's not going to be a big, uh, a hard border, um, the, the UK will not have to follow at all, for example, the EU's um, laws on uh, environmental protection, on uh, workers' protection, if we change that in the future. So you cannot go below what is the standard well, right well, now. We members, but so, if mean, we, but if, yeah, not but. Much. Excuse me, we're talking here about how to prevent a hard border, and that is in the UK's interest as well as in our interest. It's in the interest of safeguarding peace in Northern Ireland. That is not an issue that should be underestimated by anyone. No, I'm just saying. And the EU has been trying to really come up with a solution. Sure, Maine said, okay, we don't want the backstop, but they never, the British government has never come up with an alternative solution, yeah. and that is the problem. No, but I'm, I'm just saying to you that a British voter might not think it's much of a concession to say it's a concession that after you leave we won't dictate to you what your environmental policy is. This is about the backstop which is a temporary uh, solution where the UK government has not come up with any alternative thing. It's not about dictating, it's about common rules that we have all together agreed on. The UK has been part of that, the, all uh, the parliamentarians of the UK have been part of that, so I certainly won't accept that language. OK, Scar Keller, thank you uh, very much indeed. Uh, Scar Keller there, uh, Green Party MEP from uh, Germany.